Hi guys, this is Hola. podcast extra two with music sounds better with two and it's our second time recording this extra so we're working with all the twos at the moment. Natalie man how are you feeling? You know what right I just feel like no matter how many times the machine tries to get us down we mm. won't be stopped. We will not be contained. Okay, as Miley Cyrus in 2010 says, we can't be tamed, okay? No, I wouldn't <laughs> have thought so. Um, We're going to keep coming. We're going to keep yeah. coming for you. Basically, we did speak last week about maybe trying to do some reaction videos. Yeah. We were naive like enough we to, to think that we could just merely react to a video. Copyright's a thing, guys. I mean, we did know. We're not stupid enough to, yeah. to think that we could just blindly... Maybe we were stupid be. enough to think we could well, just blindly do what we wanted. Yeah, because but... I feel I feel like we've been slipping under the radar on Spotify, so please don't pull our mm. shows. But I feel like we've been slipping under the radar a lot on Spotify, so I thought we could just get away with it here Yeah, as well. we're definitely slipping under many radars, but YouTube yeah. ain't one of them. Nah, it's not. Like, dang. The radars were alert. <laughs> so we did, um, they were on high alert for us for Music mm-hmm. Sounds Better with Two. So we did record a bit yesterday. I'd taken yeah. some quite strong painkillers. I uh, spoke at length <laughs> about Megan and Harry and how racism is yes. terrible and how yeah. Megan and Harry are beautiful and yeah. they deserve to live in happiness with their children and their chickens. Yes, uh, the chickens. The chickens are yeah. real. The real, I would say, the real like side stars of the show. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, the side, yeah. Big side character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And um, we were delighted with our Little Mermaid reference and the fact that she's loved the Little Mermaid reference. 100%, she saved Harry. Reference. I don't really like the word saved, but I like the idea that she's o- she opened his eyes. Opened his to, eyes. Yeah. To yeah, like, to the oppression sort of that he was under, oppression. and that it was possible for him to escape from under that oppression, mm-hmm. and they just yeah. have so much love and care and mutual respect for each other and it's really wonderful and really inspirational and that that's me saying in a non-drugged up state how I feel <laughs> which I don't think is that different from what I was like on strong like slightly English. clearer eyed I can see your people. uh-huh yeah <laughs> I probably do look a lot clearer eyed today a bit more camera ready yeah this is one of several ways that I'm dealing with having I love that hair Ariana pony. that hasn't been cut since last July. The Ariana pony has given me life, mm-hmm. honestly. Well, I did mention her on the podcast and it's awakened my love for her all over Take again. Honestly, what yeah, an icon. Yeah, she's awesome. So we are going to do a reaction video. Part two. We're going to hope that <laughs> We can safely. There's no part three. In the if there, there won't be a part three either way. Like it's Vegas or bust at this point. I'm probably mixing metaphors again and. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. We're hoping that we can Yikes. safely we have safe passage under the radar. <laughs> now at least currently also wearing a jumper that I think is um, Love Heart Jumper two point so it's cute just, yeah it's it cute. might like be problematic one. yeah so there is a story it. i feel i need i need to explain so i yeah. bought this jumper um in harajuku in 2016 when i went to japan um and I, when i saw it in the shop i was like i need to have it because like it has like a typo on it because like, it's so gnarly it's like so it's got a little cat and he's obviously really hungry right or <laughs> angry that's exactly how I look when I'm hungry. But, <laughs> me too. but it's like H A N G L Y. And I was like, I'm a sucker for like a sort of typo like thing. Mm-hmm. So I had to buy it. I'm unsure how okay it is, but I'm still. Yeah, <laughs> less said about that, the better. But it is really cute and very Natalie, and I love it. And I'm glad that I've got something to replace the Love Heart jumper that I miss yeah. so dearly. I hope whoever's wearing that is just that and the good girls like to send shirt whoever has those like I hope you're living your best life I hope you are too (laughs) 
And if you're watching, get in touch. <laughs> please, <laughs> please, 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 please do, yeah. Okay. So we're going to share screen. We're going in. Taking the dive. We're not clicking optimize for video clip because that nope. caused us all black kinds bars. of problems yesterday. Just like, hey, black bars that we didn't want to see. So we're steering away from that, yep. Yeah. Oh, Seems like that's a, good a spoiler idea alert for the second video. And this is the first video. No. <laughs> I'm going to put my glasses on because I feel like I'm going to need them. Ugh. So I can see. There we are. So Kate Bush, we both love her. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't? Um, I had a resurgence in my memory of how much I loved her a little while back, sitting on the train coming back from town, which was obviously a long time ago now, oh given God, that I've like not been on a train for a long time. Yeah. Um, a favourite Kate Bush song, Natalie? Mm, mine's just probably a toss-up between this one, because I think the synth work in this mm -hmm. is so outstanding. Mm. Or I'm a sucker for this woman's work just because it's so beautiful. So yeah, beautiful. as that's lovely as well. Yeah, I'm I'm tied between those two forever. Yeah. So thank you, Joseph Saf. I've butchered that name. I know that oh. for sure. <laughs> There's a lot of accents going on. So mm -hmm. yeah, that we know nothing of the relevance of. No. So this is a performance that she did. <laughs> <laughs> on the Wogan show in 1995, Terry Wogan, he was a big part, definitely, of my childhood, to take it yours as well. Uh, yeah, like, so that was, my dad only ever exclusively listened to, and still only listens to Radio 2, so mm. um, he obviously did the breakfast show on that. Do you, that remember watch, do you remember watching him on the television, though, the Terry no. Wogan show? No, Terry Wogan my show, outstanding memory is whenever there was a new musical, in the West End, Terry would always have the cast on and they would always perform a song from it. And that my dad got very excited about that. And I in turn. That sounds got quite... chaotic AF. That yeah. Also sounds like, like the most chaotic. I mean, it sounds amazing, but it also sounds it like. It was totally most chaotic normal show you could ever have. then, but probably, yeah, <laughs> now it's, that is quite chaotic. But. <laughs> just so like a whole we... West End theatre production going on. <laughs> like... Well, it would just be the cast that were doing that particular song that they were performing. Yeah, yeah. yeah have a little interview yeah um, i suppose they still do it on like strictly come dancing and stuff like yeah. Just, yeah well this was much more stripped back than yeah. strictly yeah. <laughs> i would imagine mm. so we watched this yesterday after we'd um reacted to the other two songs which are now lost to the ages <laughs> um, so this is just a little bit <laughs> of extra Natalie time and yeah. we were kind of captivated by it guys and um, we want to share that with you. Natalie's got some thoughts. I've just got some <laughs> awe and wonder. So we'll combine those and we'll see how we go. here we go. Here's a little blast of Kate Bush. Kate Bush? <laughs> Am I still on painkillers? No, you're doing the you're doing the umlaut thing. You're doing the I like to wreck out. Like you're doing to like to, you're, it's Canada season. We're celebrating Canada. <laughs> <laughs> running up that hill on the Wogan show in 1985. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Got some intense drums and flags. Guitars all over the place. Guitar, yeah. The synth work is too good, I can't. Yeah. Now let's immediately pause here. <laughs> what on earth is going on on the screen? I mean, it's giving me serious, like, um, Catholic chapel flashbacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, there's like. Like the person at the lectern giving the reading, and then like yeah. the like cast the cassock priests behind. Absolutely. Well, she is <laughs> doing a deal with God. I mean, it is. Yeah. Like, you know, running up that hill in brackets, 
uh, deal with God. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's intense. She looks so good. I know. <laughs> he doesn't make a deal with you, there's a problem. <laughs> the advance in half steps of the back in people, or is yes. quite terrifying. It's quite so you've picked up on something here that I didn't notice at first because I was so <laughs> transfixed by Kate. But it is a kind of like grandma's footsteps situation. You know when you'd have your back turned and like people would like get like a little bit closer uh -huh. and then you'd have Dude, to spin round was... and if you'd have to stop dead and you'd have to freeze yeah. and if you didn't freeze, that was you out. Yeah, mate, what's yeah. the time, Mr. Wolf? Is that, yeah, what's the time, yeah. Mr. Wolf? Is that what people called it? Yo. Yeah, it probably was. Forget that I said grandma's footsteps. That's <laughs> probably offensive to grandma's and footsteps. Um, <laughs> but I feel, well, I've got two things to say here. I feel that if this was what modern day sermons looked like, I would go to church would be, every day. Yeah. <laughs> you hear Kate pour, pouring her soul out. To see yeah. the cassock priests like slowly inching with their keytars and drums. Yeah, <laughs> doing this one. But also, <laughs> I notice here, and I do not remember this from the Wogan show at the time. We have a kind of sort of VH1 pop-up situation rip going off. on. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ah. There's another one coming up in a little second that I'm sure tickled us yesterday when we saw it. Let's keep going. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah. I'm not letting this slide. Yeah. Not under my radar. Mm -hmm. The song suggests that if a man and woman could do a deal with God deal to with swap God. their bodies, they could resolve their relationship differences. Mm -hmm. So they're imposing, Wogan's imposing some meaning here. It is. It's a I mean, I know it's, as well. it's fair. I think yeah. it, she did have those intentions for the songs. I just mm -hmm. don't remember this little kind of... The Nuggets? The nuggets I mean, it couldn't have been, because VH1 came later, surely. Did it? I Did don't VH1 even know rip off Terry Wogan? No, surely not. I'm going to Google this 1985! Thing. They must have! This is uh, before VH1. It must be. I'm, I'm convinced that VH1 was just like such a classic nuanced idea that you can possibly have sold it from anyone. I'm going to be really sad if I find out they stole it off a of Terry Wogan. <laughs> <laughs> sad I mean, or come on. completely weirded out? I mean, really weirded out? VH1 yeah, pop-up video? I'm Googling it right now on the side. Okay. Well, she I mean, that, I'll continue to react. I've seen the first okay. episode was 1996. The favorite thing about this, just steering away from the comedy briefly. <laughs> it's like there's no one else in the room. She's completely lost in her own artistry. On we and yeah, totally. and her own thoughts. Yeah, she doesn't think... even care about the advancing classics behind there. Like, <laughs> <whatever. laughs> least of all them, yeah. They yeah, she's like do with anything as far as she's concerned. It's just yeah. she's so lost in that performance. It's really mm -hmm. quite unique. Really, it's really special. Yeah. You know what? A... It feels performative, but person. not for the sake of anybody that's sharing a room with her. <laughs> nah, she's like, I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this for yes. me, okay? You can yeah. write whatever pop VH1 pop-ups you want over the top of me. Yeah, I'm they can here. put anything up. Yeah. Not interested. Not interested. This is where it becomes extremely intense, like it hasn't been intense beforehand. Yeah, it does start to <laughs> intensify and I can't remember quite what part it is, but I know it's, it's coming up. It's oh, when that dude it's is when that dude behind her. Yeah, he yes, is he starts. Yeah. 
and his face totally intensifies and it just becomes crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Give it to us. <laughs> Look at the focus on all of their faces. Such focus, yes. Much Such intensity. focus, much hair. Very there well. He is. <laughs> There he is. That guy right there has mm-hmm. the most intense expression ever recorded on screen. Yeah. <laughs> Staring <laughs> intently into a future <laughs> that he doesn't know exists yet. Exactly. Again, another lockdown mood. I know. I'm just, and also, like, the fact that there's two people just holding flags throughout the, the whole time. They yeah. do nothing. They're just standing. They're just standing at the back. It's quite biblical, isn't it? Totally. They're ready. They're ready to go to war. Yeah. It was really cool. It was just a really cool performance. She must be the only woman that can make kind of yoo-hoo, like kind of ridiculous phrases like that sound really <laughs> profound and sincere. There he is. Yep, he agrees. Profound <laughs> <and sincere. laughs> all the way. I know he totally he, agrees. He is agreeing with everything we are saying. Yeah. Yes, Kate. Uh huh. Come through. Mm-hmm. He's lost like, in honestly. wonder. The guy in the right there. Yep. Yeah, he's totally eyes closed. Everything. Eyes closed the whole time. I'll exchange any experience with you, Kate. <laughs> yeah. What a talent. I'll exchange wardrobes actually now that I'm getting a good I, I know. Very cool. The only woman that can make about cool. 25 shades of brown all work together somehow. Oh, trust me, all I wore in my teens was different shades of brown and I did not look like that. <laughs> I looked terrible. <laughs> oh my god. This is where the guy behind her reaches ultimate form, final form intensity. Yeah, they now become a three piece. They're so close. Yeah. That... <laughs> and he's just totally lost in the moment. The moustache guy playing the whatever that even instrument is. Are they, is it like a ukulele or something? I didn't. I mean, I'm barely aware of any other instruments existing other than Kate Bush's instrument. Yeah. I mean, it's quite sophisticated set design for 1985. I mean, people's minds must have been getting blown apart watching this. Yeah, I mean, this true. looks kind of nothing and a bit silly to maybe a lot of people now, but no, this is the best, this is the- and this is <laughs> it. He could have been blown apart. She's full on ready to take a member of the audience out. Yeah, man. Amazing. It's, this is where it turns into a Renaissance painting and I'm delighted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, applause is one reaction fears probably another guys what do you think let us know in the comments but that was an experience yeah it was let's have a quick gander at the comments shall we (laughs) paula heron she was in the audience paula did um, you get shot tell us are you okay yeah plus heron link to the bird fact of the week (laughs) yeah well, kind of <laughs> no. like there's actually another partial bird fact coming up, I would have thought, <laughs> when we go on to discuss the original this video is... for the next track. But let's shelve that for now. Yeah, this has just became a bird podcast now. <laughs> it's going that direction, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was it going to be anything else with me as a co-host? Probably so not. Paula Heron, she was in the audience. I quite like how casual Jack Carr's response to that is. What else did she yeah. do that night? Did she yeah. go for the, yeah. the 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 monks, the priests afterwards? Yeah, did, did there they aren't many, out? Yeah, there aren't many recordings of her live. That's true. Yeah. Any other theatrics or costumes? There's a bit of me hmm. that thinks, is he testing her to see if she really was in she the was audience really that there. night? Me too. Me too. <laughs> so I think so. Like, where? Where? Tell me. Tell Since me. Tell there. me. I'm gonna check. I hate people that do that. Like, ugh. Oh, like, Walladie straight up calls her out. 
You're a big fat ugly liar. Fat, ugly liar? <gasps> well, spell there's liar no properly and we might take you seriously. Yeah. There's a <laughs> liar literally lying down or there's like no need for that. Can you provide a link for that? People are what? coming for Paula. Like, do you know what this do you know what this is the 80s version of? Tell me. The version of the version of dudes asking girls that wear the Nirvana shirt to name songs by Nirvana. Ooh, this is that version of that. That's a bad move. That's bad. Like, just let people let people tell you that they went in, that they were at a Kate Bush performance and let's believe them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And you know what? See if you're wearing a Nirv- Nirvana t-shirt just because you literally like the word Nirvana and yeah, t-shirt. Yeah, wear it. Who cares to that either? Who cares? I literally don't care. I used to be one of these gatekeeper people that was like, oh my god, like... <laughs> I like I, I will tell you when you've reached the peak fandom allowed to wear their merch. No. No, exactly. I'm like, no, 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 no. If you like the shirt, wear it. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the responses that Paula got. They're quite toxic. I'm gonna They're move so away from mean. that now. They're so mm-hmm. mean. They are. There's so many personal stories on like older YouTube videos. Yeah, it is like, weird. Like, like the further yeah. back you go into kind of like old music videos, the, the more it kind of becomes, you know, yeah. they'll tell you about their their wife suffering with an illness or how a song yeah. got them through a really difficult time and it kind of moves away from the kind of... Um, the meme culture of the millennials. We are just by... This is me <laughs> at two minutes 43. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. Which, by the way, I like and find really funny, but it's ni- it's quite nice when you... It's a generational like another... divide, I think. Yeah, it is. It's nice when you yeah. discover that kind of different side of YouTube comments yeah. where people I think, like, are so open and... Yeah. I think people. older people that use YouTube are much more earnest about it. They're not like the millennials or like the Gen Zs that like yeah. just make jokes constantly in the comments. Yeah, just... I'm one of those people. I make, I make, I make the jokes, but inside I'm like crying. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we're friends. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we did uh, read this comment yesterday. We did like it. We are going to read it and then we might move on to Roxy Music. <laughs> Dave Dog. Dog. Doggy. Doggy. Okay. It doesn't matter because the content is. I'm going to go Doge. I think it might be French. Doge is good. If only she'd fired that arrow at the end of that Top of the Pop show and hit Jimmy Savile and at the end, it would have solved <laughs> so many problems. It really would have. Okay, so next one. Next one. up, we have <laughs> one of my all time favorite bands Same. ever. Same. Oh. music. I think when you just hear, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> like that weird, that, yeah. that, that crazy, like, breathy voice that he has, it's I so good. I feel like this is gonna not only strip away any remaining shreds of my credibility as someone under the age of. 40 <laughs> only just but also is going to divide a lot of people i feel like roxy music and brian ferry are quite divisive discuss really <laughs> I'm, like, yeah. I've never, I've never spoke to anyone that didn't think they were like really really good like i just like so You're surrounding i think yourself with the right people then yeah i think like in the 80s so like obviously there was a lot going on musically and i think they did something very distinctive mm-hmm. uh pretty stylish pretty cool and like my favorite gta game of all time yes. i say had modern days on the soundtrack and it's 100 yeah i mean so i'm good. not a like, massive video game player but for some reason the grand theft auto games just captivated me i love the stories so i find good you know they're there's so a good. lot of humor there's a lot of really good character development development in so them good. they're made by rockstar who's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a scottish route there yep um, um, I walked past so the yeah. Rockstar building in Edinburgh and I got dead excited, but oh, I, was, I, was, I was too frightened to go up to the doors. Even <laughs> I just walked by. Mm-hmm. I just walked by, made my way to like the Royal Mile. Like, see you later. Um, <laughs> yeah, Rockstar um, music um, does feature quite heavily, I think, on a couple of the games, which is quite nice. Yes, it is. But you um, know, there look, were look. art. There were art, pop, art, rock, and there, mm-hmm. I think there was. Do you not think at the time I've never heard considered to be quite. Ponzi and a bit 
uh, well, do you know, maybe this was, maybe this is because, yeah, yeah, like, honestly, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. But like, may, like maybe it's because, like, at the time where I've heard people talking about Roxy music, it's been mm-hmm. like now. So as in, like, I don't have any reference. Oh, they had a resurgence. Talk- like, no, just like, just like, as in people that I talk to about Roxy music, it's like yeah. we're, we're talking about them in the present. As in, like, oh, like, what do you think about Roxy music? So like, I don't have any context to how people received them in the eighties. Like. I think now they're very, very like looked back upon as being like very yeah, that's like, what cool I mean. So they're kind and of different. like the the their appreciation for them now. Then yeah, that's what I mean. Cause like, I, when you said that, I was like, what? I was like, I didn't realize wow. people didn't like Roxy music, but you're maybe right. Maybe it's back just in my the own self loathing talking. Anyway, let's brush past <laughs> that and let's let's enjoy this. Is, so this is uh, Roxy music. My favourite song they ever did, Avalon, live in 1982, when I was born. Um, don't think there's anything that Hig Madon has given us here about where they're performing. It does say top pop. Don't know if that means top of the pops. We'll never uh, know. Um, we'll never it know. really makes no odds because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. where the performance itself could literally be everywhere and nowhere all at once. I like a lot of 80s uh, things. Yep. Classic white. I was going to say, I love that Brian Ferry always looks like he's about to serve you your dinner in an Italian restaurant. <laughs> Can't imagine it better. Is that Bridget Jones in the background? <laughs> I actually looks so like. <laughs> It's like a Zellweger. touch of the Rennie like Zellweger. She's got like a young Rennie Zellweger vibe of her. Look at those shoulders, like the voluminous. Like, <laughs> I've not paused it at a fortunate moment for Brian. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, actually, every every moment's a fortunate moment for Brian. He's just got this, like. I bet it was in 1982. <laughs> I bet he was having a lot of fortunate moments. <laughs> I mean, he's just got this, like. This guy. life was a series of fortunate moments. I know. He was like the Travis Barker of the day, but like <laughs> 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 having many connections. With that conversation, can't help but do the shoulder shuffle. That is so good. It's just so good. It's such a vibe. Yes, yeah, sing it, girl. There is a kind of sense that he doesn't quite know what to do with his body, though. I mean, unless I he's can't... bought he's bought a tuxedo that's maybe too small for him. By the <laughs> way, I once heard you'll never you'll you'll not believe that I can connect Roxy Music to the film The Wicker Man. I 100 well believe that. There is yeah, you probably well we believe. Are, we, we are the center right. of all things. But the guy, so Edward Woodward. Yeah, quite pleased I managed to even get his name out there correctly. But he was do- he was in an interview saying about how he managed to get so method about being the uptight police officer in the Wicker Man by literally mm-hmm. having a suit made for him that was too small, too and that That's forced so cool. his body in that like yeah. stiff, like repressed yeah. posture. That is really Love cool. It. So yeah, maybe that's I'll leave that <laughs> fat tang in there. I think, do you know what? I think it's just because he's like he's vibing and he's like. Is that what vibing looked like in 1980? Yeah, like, if he doesn't, that's what vibing looks like right now. That's what I thought it was just like. Every moment. And you're destination. Look at that tense. So tense again. That was the 80s. They weren't afraid to be intense. True. Sure. <laughs> they both directly looked at the camera at the I same know. time. <laughs> oh, come on. Come through. Yes, Buddy Holly. Yes. Oh my God, I love his bolo tie. That's so good. I want to know who she is. I want to know everything about her. <laughs> I mean, so she's good. ready to go to her nine to five office job in the morning, but right now, yeah. she, she only has eyes for Brian. Girl. Yeah. Look at look at how high up that guy's bass guitar is. 
Like, well, see, you would notice things like that. Is that, is that no. a kind of common trope of like bad handling of guitars? No, no. Like I was, I think that's like a like a a time difference thing. Because I think like in this mm-hmm. from the fifties to like the eighties, the mm-hmm. thing was to have your guitar up like super like quite high. Whereas yep. then, like as soon as it got into the nineties and two thousand, was that like slowly was that like a stylistic down. choice that's though? A style thing? So it, it's oh, not yes. that it makes it any easier or more like or anything to no. play. It's literally no. just how it looks on your body. A hundred percent, yeah. Like That's so think, fascinating. Like, as clothes got baggier, guitar straps mm-hmm. got lower. Because like, get lower, like, and, and now they're just like, <laughs> yeah. like and now they're just in the middle lower. again. Just yeah. like yeah. crotches of jeans and guitars just skimming the floor barely. Yeah, yeah. But now it's that. came back to some sort of mid ground. Now I feel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Probably because everyone from like the nineties and two thousands has like serious back problems now. <laughs> you need to go <laughs> a bit higher. They were like bent over double the whole time. <laughs> I always loved how they did that as well. That they would have like they would film. The, the other musicians in really unflattering angles. I mean, I wonder whether any of them look back now and go, why on earth was there a camera shooting like, like from the ground gosh. up? <laughs> no one should be seen at. But I like, kind of love it. Also, his nostrils, Natalie. No, but I kind of love it. And I love that the camera's like spinning crazily and everything's like <laughs> sort of... <laughs> <It> <laughs> is, like, I've just discovered cameras for the first time. Yeah. And it's like a sort of horrific, like motion sick nightmare. <laughs> like every, like everything's like blurry and like out of focus, and it's like whoa, like out of focus. <laughs> like literally, the the camera operator took Brian at his word. Yeah. Tell me, Brian. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah, right. Like, why room. is it the fifties and the eighties? I mean, I think Roxy music were were quite inspired by nineteen yeah, fifties kind of aesthetics. Yeah, That's yeah, probably that, part of why I love them so much. That, this is totally giving me like David Lynch vibes. Yeah, Laura Palmer, there she is. Yeah, yeah. founder. Like that kind of thing. Very cool. just loving the life, lost life is so I think a similarity between Brian and Kate is just how unbothered they are by anything and anyone. Yeah, because they're just, they feel like they don't really need to like put Unless, on like a sort of show. This is maybe though what it looked like to be really bothered about how you looked back then. Like that because oh, maybe. it looks so insane. They seem yeah. to be so lost in their own little worlds. Yeah, totally. Look at his eyes are closed and everything. His eyes are closed. Yeah, he's like... I mean, the saxophonist, like... Oof, he maybe he's needs to open his eyes a little bit more. He can't. He's too lost in the, in the moment. Yeah, well, hope there's not any steps on the stage he's going to trip over. <laughs> Oh, bye bye. Like, like, even after he's finished playing, like, he's just walking down the stairs with his eyes closed as well. He's just eyes yeah. closed. Yeah, that's just how he lives <laughs> his life. Yeah, he can't I do it. That. He's too lost in the moment. Dare and we he's... jump into those comments? I think we should. See if, see if there's any, if they given any hate. Well, Sw- I'm no. going to let you be quiet, advert. <laughs> I'm gonna let you read out the name of the first person if you can. Dionisio Jose DJ Duval Jaimes. I knew you would have a better chance at it than me. (laughs) Brian Ferry, the epitome (laughs) of suave and elegant sophistication, so immediately, immediate appreciation. Eight replies, let's have a look. If they don't all agree, I'll be sad. (gasps) (gasps) Elegant means clumsy. What, because he's doing this? What's wrong with doing that? I mean, you're vibing. Mm. The only man killer on the phone. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Peter this Piper! Like, this is <laughs> like on the YouTube for my friend. This looks like a dream sequence from Father Ted. 
<laughs> I actually does look like my lovely horse a little bit. My lovely horse now. Me too. Me too. Such a good, such a good moment. <laughs> Please add Robert Palmer. These, these man, these man oozed. Yes, Donna, they did. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Glad I clicked to see the replies now. Me oh, too. here we go. Here's some information about um the young Bridget Jones oh, lady. Okay. Although she is only lip syncing to Yannick Etienne's voice, Martha Jane Laidley or Ladley is the backup singer appearing in this video. She was the keyboardist and one of the two female vocalists named Martha in the Canadian band. It's Canada season. Martha officially. and the Muffins. It's kind of the season. Remember Echo Beach? Friend, no. I don't even know who... You lost me at Martha and the, the Muffins, but I want to be found. Yeah. Oh, God, just a quick... Oh, let's there's a hundred quick look here. God. Lots of people really excited about Yannick Etienne. And oh, uh, and right, Etienne. the God Particle, just you calm down. Mm. <laughs> let's not be jumping on each other, no. No. Right, okay. Oh, hey Bradley, did you see the interview with Professor Martha Ladley in here? Brains, looks, and such a voice. Oh, I might check that out later. Mm. I want to know everything about her now. Oh, Rick S. You're Rick S. Hmm. Cancelled. Bye. Things to say see here. Later. She's definitely from an era when people cared what they looked like. After me spending about six minutes of this video going, they yeah. don't care what like they look like. It's really fun. And yeah. wouldn't dream of butchering themselves with tattoos and piercings. Bye. Happy see to later, butcher Rick myself. I know, me too. I love it, it means never having to see your face. <laughs> exactly. Other people appreciating Martha Jane yep. Ladley. Yep. <laughs> what? Co- Corona kick? What? Corona kick? No, it was me who was the backup singer and keyboardist, <laughs> and I'm also Canadian. Holy hell, does Canada even exist? It's only 110 miles from here, but it's just not happening. Not in that thousand year period. Don't people get that? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the podcast, mate. I can't. I stop love waxing. YouTube, mate. Yeah, I can't stop waxing lyrical about Canada. There's so much, so so much musical talent. So like that could have booty. been written by me at the peak of my um, painkiller high yesterday. Yeah, probably it made no sense. two one one two. I think I just became pregnant watching this, and I'm a man. I'm nice one, Avid. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah, great stuff. Oh, guys. Everyone's talking about him being James Bond. Yeah. James Bond. And I'm like, okay. Not a fan of James Bond. Oh, like, I am from like a sort of childhood aspect, as in, like, Mm. they were on all the time in my house and they're completely. Kinda couldn't help but get caught up in the. And also, I still still like them now through a sort of nostalgia lens, but I realise they're so bad, especially the really early ones. Yeah. Um, They're like so chauvinistic, like so terrible. But, it is um, weird because I mean James Bond is is such like a British institution and but this is the same as the one funnily family. enough it's a machine that we're coming for right of now British institutions aren't looking fully no, as nice as what they used to right now are they no and that's why like um I absolutely love the Austin Powers franchise because mm. I feel like it totally like tore into shreds but in like the most beautiful way. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> in quite an innocent way, actually. Yeah, as if, like, you know, I love these growing up too, and they were a bit ridiculous, but hey. Yeah. Amazing. We'll finish off with this comment. I think they will be listening to this song in 2080. This is timeless. Aww, if you're is watching in 2080, yeah. are you still watching? Does YouTube even yeah. exist? Does the world exist? We'll never know. We'll never know. Thank you, Z Z T six. Yep. Z T six? Eighty six. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the, the podcast extras I feel like are they're gonna be quite ramshackle and a bit rambly and a bit spontaneous. I Wait, don't think like well with spontaneity. Natalie does, yeah, but I have <laughs> I feel like I have a tighter grip. On the podcast, you do. I, feel like I just I have a less tight grip on the extras, and it upsets yeah. me, but excites me at the same time. I, I just live my life in like an organized 
edge of my seat chaos every mm. single day and that's just I don't know I vibe to it I love it I love not being prepared for things um Julie is like I hate it part. we're just such I'd a rather die in that way but I kind of I, th- I think there is like, quite I need, you, to I need you in my life to like control stabilize like, you wow yeah. if I'm being used as a stabilizing <laughs> force in anyone's life I mean that is uh that's a thought <laughs> But yeah, together we make one fully formed human being. We're even in monochrome today and we didn't. We didn't plan it. You know. Yeah. To be fair, like, not that rare for me because, like, all my wardrobe is, like, black or grey or, like, beige. <laughs> you know, muted. Yeah, normally I'm head to toe, like, multicolour, so it's yeah. it's um quite nice to switch it up today. Yeah. But like anyway, guys, we'll get out of your hair <laughs> if we're still in it. I want to stay in people's hair forever. We've got an exciting podcast coming up this weekend. Um, we might even have a guest for you. The music might be sounding better with more than two. A thruple. Of sorts, even though I hate that word. <laughs> Thanks the way through for making me hate the word thruple. Um, but we'll Aww. catch you. We'll catch you there on Sunday and hopefully here next week as well. Enjoy the rest of your week, guys. Ciao, ciao. Bye.